Hi there. Now in this example on transformations of the complex plane, we've got a transformation T of the z-plane which is given by W equals IZ minus 1 all divided by 1 minus z. And z doesn't equal 1. And what we've got to do is show that as z lies on the imaginary axis in the z-plane, then W lies on a circle. And we've got to find the centre and radius. OK, to do a question like this then, what I would want to do is we'll just copy down what we're given, this transformation T, which is then W equals IZ minus 1 divided by 1 minus Z. Now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to rearrange this, make Z the subject, and then I'm going to compare real and imaginary parts. And from that, we should be able to get a relationship in terms of u and v if we let w equal u plus iv. Anyway, I'll show you. So we're going to make z the subject. So first of all, then I'm going to multiply both sides by 1 minus z. So if we do that, we therefore have w multiplied by 1 minus z. And that's going to be equal to iz minus 1. So expand the bracket and we get W minus WZ equals IZ minus 1. Then I'm going to add 1 to both sides and add WZ to both sides. So we therefore have W plus 1 equals IZ plus WZ. Now if I factorise the right hand side here, We've got w plus 1 equals, we'll pull out the z as a common factor, and then we've got i plus w. So if I divide now both sides by i plus w, we have z equaling w plus 1, all divided by i plus w. OK. Now what I'm going to do is let w equal u plus iv. So what we've got here is u plus iv for w plus the 1 there, all divided by, and then we've got i, and then we've got plus w again, which is u plus iv. Now I'm going to group up the real and imaginary parts. So what we've got now is that on the top, We've got the real part u plus 1, so put that in there as u plus 1. And then the imaginary part is plus iv. And then this is divided by, and then again if we group up the real parts, we've only got the u there, so that's u plus now the imaginary parts. Which we've got 1i and then we've got iv there, so we've got 1 plus v and then I put the i there. Now what I'm going to do is clean this up by multiplying top and bottom now then by the complex conjugate of the denominator. So in other words, we're multiplying top and bottom by u minus, and then we've got 1 plus v, i, and then that's all over u minus 1 plus v, i. Okay? Now, if I let z equal x plus iy, then I should be able to expand this out and compare the real part, which would be x, to the real part of this, and compare the imaginary part of z, y, with the imaginary part of this. So let's do that now, OK? We'll come down here and uh, start to expand this for the real part, OK? So if we do that, we've got x equals. Now for the top part, the real parts are going to be when we multiply this u with the u plus 1 here. So we've got u multiplied by u plus 1. We're also going to get a real part when we multiply iv with 1 plus v i. 
We've got a negative here, so when we do i times i, that's going to be i squared, which is negative 1, multiplied by this minus 1 is going to be a plus, and then we're just going to get v times 1 plus v. Okay, v times 1 plus v. So that's the real part in the numerator of our fraction. The bottom here is essentially the difference of two squares. We end up with u times u, which is u squared, u times minus 1 plus vi, and 1 plus vi times the u. They cancel one another out, and we're just left then with 1 plus vi multiplied by minus 1 plus vi, which is going to be plus 1 plus v all squared. Okay, so that's the real part. If we do much the same for the imaginary part, y, then looking at the imaginary part that we get when we expand out the top here, we're going to have u plus 1 times minus 1 plus v, i. So that's going to be minus u plus 1 multiplied by the 1 plus v. We're also going to get an imaginary part when we do u times iv. So that's going to be plus uv. And this too is divided by what we get when we multiply this with this. We've seen it here. It's u squared plus all of 1 plus v squared. Now in this question, we're told that z lies on the imaginary axis in the z-plane. In other words, the real part must be zero. So for this question then, we've got that the real part, which is x, must equal zero. So all I need to do is just put this equal to zero. Well, if you've got a fraction that equals zero, the numerator must be equal to zero. So therefore, what we've got is u multiplied by u plus 1 plus v times 1 plus v must equal zero. And if I expand this out, what we've got is u squared plus u plus v plus v squared equals zero. And if I complete the square on this section here and also on this section here, what we've got is for u squared plus u, that's going to be u plus half, okay, all squared. This will give us u squared plus u plus a quarter. So I need to subtract a quarter. Okay, so that will now give us u squared plus u. And if we complete the square across v squared and v, it's going to be basically the same kind of thing. That is v plus a half, all squared, minus a quarter. Okay, and that's going to equal zero. So if I add a quarter and a quarter to both sides, what we end up with is u plus a half, all squared, and then plus all of v plus a half, all squared, and that equals one half. And this is the form of a circle. So what we've got here then is a circle. We've got a circle with a center at minus a half, minus a half, okay? And as for the radius, the radius is going to be equal to the square root of a half. Okay, the root of a half. It's not going to be plus or minus, obviously, because the radius is going to be a positive length. Well, this is the same as the square root of 1, which is 1 over the square root of 2. 1 over root 2. Or you could rationalize this, and you're going to get root 2 over 2. Now, you could have been given the question that z lies on the real axis. If z lies on the real axis, then it would have been the imaginary part that would have equaled zero. So if I was working this out, the numerator of this would equal zero. Now if you made this equal zero, what you end up with is v equals minus u minus one, a straight line. So do check that out, okay? 
That's if you were asked that question. Okay, well, I hope it's given you an idea how we can go about tackling these types of questions just by comparing real or imaginary parts and finding then the relationship between the variables u and v.